Hello everybody, welcome to my chess stream here on Lee Chess and Twitch, International Master William Pascal. Today we're, uh, we're doing a weird Wednesday stream, which means I'm playing unusual kind of openings I wouldn't normally play, maybe gambits and uh, fun stuff that's outside my day-to-day -day repertoire in um, Blitz and Classical Chess here against the viewers. So anything between 5 plus 3 and 8 plus 3 challenges casual chess will be accepted subscribers have first shot good morning guys it's still early i'm just waking up i had to start the stream a second time cursing my <clears throat> cursing my computer a minute ago i don't know if you overheard me um but we look good to go here i changed the settings very very slightly um last night it was fine we we had a good viewer tournament it was fun um, this new account, Last Dance, won the tournament. I finished fourth. Today I'm going to put up a video on, um, on my YouTube channel going over some of the games from my last couple of simuls. I do, I do simuls on uh, Sunday nights here on Leech Chess. If you don't know, a simul is an exhibition where a master plays more than, um, more than one player simultaneously. So every Sunday I play 25 players. Little Pingwing, what's up? Um, good to see you. So every, every Sunday I play up to 25 players and, um, it's a good training because the games can last up to like three hours. So it's really like, if you don't have time to play in a tournament, it's hard to find, um, it's hard to find like longer games on online. I have a lot of students who, uh, who are like short of time and they want to get better, but they don't have time to go to tournaments. And if that's the case, then, um, I think it's, you know, it's, it's really difficult to, uh, to find challenging games. Um, so that's, that's an idea. <clears throat> Let me make sure we're, we're up here on Lee Chess. We are. All right. So I'm going to take challenges between five plus three and eight plus three, anything in between. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow night I'm doing uh, macros 4,200. Thanks for subscribing. The same to you, little penguin. You guys are awesome. Um, I'm going to be doing a subscriber stream tomorrow. So if you have an interesting game, you know, that you played online or maybe at, at a chess club or wherever, uh, bring it, you know, bring it in. We can take a look. Uh, I like to, I like to analyze, um, <clears throat> but I don't like to do it, you know, every stream because sometimes people get kind of bored who want to just play. So I like to do it once in a while. And, um, I think with the subscribers in particular, everyone's pretty serious about it. So. So doing game analysis, uh, you know, mixed in with Blitz on Thursdays is cool. Tomorrow night at 7 is is good for me. So I hope some of you guys can make it. Um, our usual challengers here are not, not uh, in force. I could always play a game against somebody random and just kind of talk about it. The um, I like to play in these tournaments just for fun. Macros is challenging me, okay. Um, but if you if you don't have time, I mean, I like the hourly classical. It's not a very strong field for like for me. I mean, I'm I'm 2500 on Lee Chess, 2400 Elo strength. Um, it's not that challenging. But for anyone under 2200, like the hourly classical, hourly blitz, these tournaments you can play. All right, macros. Um, again, thank you guys for for, uh, for subscribing. Um, we've only played the one game. Now, I don't remember offhand. I'll remember it when I see it. Yeah, in the simul. You resigned kind of early there. I mean, I was pretty surprised that you resigned that. But I guess, you know, objectively, you're lost. You're a pawn down. But I would I would fight on a little bit more. All right. Yesterday, I was playing e4. I'm going to play unusual openings today. I could play, like, f4 on the first move if I want to get an unusual opening. But I want to clarify what I mean by weird, weird Wednesday and unusual openings. I don't want to play like really, really stupid things like F3 or H4. Um, I want to play openings that have a semblance of a value and, uh, and are just kind of like good surprising lines. Let's play the King's Gambit. This is a perfect example of something that's really not mainstream, but has a lot of value. Now, Macros played f6. That's, as far as I know, just a blunder. 
I can just take here on, on e5. Is there any justification for this? He doesn't know the king's gambit. He blundered the rook. Well, he didn't blunder a rook yet. You know, my recommendation to you is to play this like some kind of gambit. Um, don't take back. You've got to find a way to develop your pieces here. But I'm going to... I'm going to offer him a take back. I do one take back every tournament. Every tournament. Every stream. Up to one take back every stream. I'm going to offer him to take back his move because I think... I think f6 is... Okay, he played knight c6. Well, all right, this is a reasonable reaction. If I take here, you know, he might get a little bit of compensation. Um, and then again, if I play knight f3, he also has something. And if I play d4, pawn takes pawn. This is kind of interesting. Maybe he's kidding. I don't know. I wonder if he did this on purpose. Is this like a real kind of trap? Like, I'm supposed to play d4 pawn takes pawn maybe d5 queen h4 check or knight f3 when like pawn takes pawn leaves us in some sort of you know there's no obvious um move other than like d4 pawn takes pawn knight f3 or something actually i don't know what i'm supposed to do here never in my life have i encountered this position now this could also be reached by well, actually, how else could it be reached? I don't know. Well, you could play knight c6 on move 1 and then play f6. You blundered the rook. You did not blunder a rook. He's playing a weird opening, not me. I thought the king's gambit was, was extravagant enough, but... Um, yeah, this doesn't look really correct for black, but there's no overt re refutation. Um, so... How many options do I have here? Not that many. I mean, d4. d4, pawn takes pawn. Doesn't look so bad for black. I could play d4 and sack the pawn back with something like d4, pawn takes pawn, knight f3. That looks decent for white. Then knight takes d4. Huh? That's the best I can come up with here, really. I mean, taking the pawn, okay. Taking the pawn on f6. Maybe that's objectively best. Pawn takes f6. Knight takes f6. Knight c3. But black really does get, like, a little development advantage there. That's weird. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I'm going to try this way, and I don't know how this position could possibly be reached um, other than by the move order we're playing. I mean, it, it almost looks like a normal position after pawn takes pawn, knight f3. The point being that, like, knight takes d4, actually, I'm going to have to play in gambit style here, which, which is fine. That was our plan anyway. I guess I have to take on f6 objectively. I, I don't know. This looks like the only serious move. Knight takes f6. Um, knight f3, and then something like d5. I, I don't know what else he could do. Probably best. Pawn takes pawn, knight f6, knight c3, knight f3, d5. You blundered the rook in the simul. What? You blundered a rook in the simul? What are you talking about? Oh, you blundered the rook, and then you resigned? I'm missing something. Open link in new window. What are you talking about? Blundered the rook. But you didn't. You had like knight takes e3, knight takes e6 check. It's ridiculous. Like I can't take your rook. Knight takes e6 check. This is our simul game. <laughs> this actually doesn't even work for me. Um, it was pretty weird. But apparently I could have played like knight f6. Okay, I was winning. Then then your resignation was justified. Alright, you're right. You weren't actually blundering a rook, but your resignation was justified. No, I thought you meant here you were blundering a rook. You know, I mean, obviously... Let me get rid of these stupid arrows. Um, Obviously, I mean, we would analyze like d4. 
pawn takes pawn. I am. I thought you were implying that you're blending a rook here, you know, with like pawn takes pawn, queen h5 check, g6, queen e5 check, um, and then queen takes h8. I thought you were joking about that, the actual game here. Um, okay, that's a very common variation. So now black's threatening queen h4 check. This is a position that, as far as I know, you know, can't really exist any other way. It also feels like the only way for white to kind of keep the tension um, in this position and play for an initiative. But I'm not really sure what I'm going to do after pawn takes pawn. I mean, I guess I have a kind of juiced up scotch gambit with the f file open. That's basically what it is. It's it's crazy. It's a scotch gambit with the f file open. Um, I guess that should favor white. I mean, the position is more open. It's sharper. How can it favor either side, really? I mean, objectively, it shouldn't really favor either side more than the other side. The fact that there's no pawns on f7 and, and f2. Welcome, guys. I'm not doing the stream every morning. Like last year, um, or in the springtime, I was doing Monday through Friday mornings, you know, so everybody was like, used to me. I'm doing it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday now in the mornings, and I'm afraid we don't have as many regulars here. But, um, you know, I feel very, very fresh and awake in the morning. I can play my best. Actually, my results in the Hungarian Team Championship and, and Budapest Team Championship last year were incredible. I didn't lose a single game. Um, I had like five wins and ten draws or something, or even more, like six wins and eleven draws. Um, in like 17 games in the morning, um, Sunday, every Sunday morning. So the only problem is if I wasn't getting enough sleep or something the night before, which happened in, um, my last term, I didn't sleep well the night before my, my last game that I lost back in June. Very important to get rest before you play, um, like any sport, I guess. So today, I guess there's going to start the rapid playoff in Aronian versus uh, Aronian versus um, Dingli Ren. I saw someone somewhere talking about whoa the elephant gambit. I mean, what is this? Wow. Okay, now you'd have this um, very strange move that Bronstein talks about in uh, 500 or 200 open games. Excellent book, by the way. Um, David Bronstein wrote a book of 200 games that he played in E45 games, um, E45 positions. And, uh, Bronstein, of course, one of the strongest players who never became world champion. He, um, he talks about this, of course, with the F pawns on the board on F2 and F7. And I, I'll be darned if I remember, like, I don't remember what the heck I'm supposed to do. I mean, knight takes e5 has to be just bad for me. Knight takes e5, knight takes e5. Um, that's not good. So we can eliminate that quickly. There's pawn takes pawn. It's not that forcing. Pawn takes e5. And then there's pawn takes d5, which looks like the most forcing move. It feels like that move makes him bring his queen out. The knight c3, um, bishop b4. It's going to be a lot like, um, it's going to be a lot like, uh, c3 Sicilian lines. I know that sounds weird, but, um, it's, it's like a piece, piece configuration thing. The piece configuration is the same from the C3 Sicilian. Ironian or Ding, I don't know, man. It's just, I think all the spectators left the left the tournament. It's like been so long and um, dragged out that I don't think there's anybody there left to watch the event. That's what I heard. Um, people are just bored with it. I'm getting kind of bored with it, honestly. I mean, every single like game is a draw. They seem to just why not? They seem to just want to play blitz. 
It's weird. Maybe because the games are unrated or something? I don't know. Maybe they don't want to risk their rating points, so they're just going to draw all the regular games and then decide it in Blitz and Rapid. Ever went to the Isle of Man? All right. Yeah, they must be handing out money like candy there at the Isle of Man. I mean, why why would all those guys play in that open? It must be a really... I'd like to know how much they're getting. I really would. I'm sure that it's not ultra public information. But I don't know. I mean, it has to be very significant. I mean, you know, how much money does it take like to get Kramnik or Anand to play in an open tournament? Those guys have lots of money. I mean, they don't need to play because you offered them 10 grand. I mean, it would probably take more than that. You know, something really chunky. A chunky amount of money to get a Kramnik to play an open tournament. But, I mean, that's a lot of money. And I don't know. I just can't believe that Kramnik and, like, Anand would play for less than that. And even 10,000 seems small to me. No, I think that bishop bishop b4 is is definitely the natural move there for black developing a piece. But queen d6 may not be that bad. I guess I'm supposed to play d5 now. All right. Now it feels like some kind of weird Chigorn. This game has had so many, so many like resemblances to other openings. He has a bad structure now, and I'm, I'm gonna play like Bishop B5 check probably, and try to um, leave him with an isolated pawn. Also, the exchange of white squared bishops might be favorable to white, since he has a pawn on dark and, and another pawn. Well, on C7, mainly because of the E5 pawn. Basically, he has a dark square pawn chain. I have a white square pawn chain. 4,000 Great British Pounds, fifth. That's the prize. Those dudes aren't going to play for that, dude. No way. They wouldn't touch it. No, they're getting, they're getting like, a really solid appearance fee. I don't know how much. I'd like to know, though. I mean, I could see some of the young guys, like, just playing because of the social aspect of it. You know, the Caruana and Nakamura. Maybe you can get him to play for 10k, but I mean, even them, it probably shouldn't be enough when people are making like $10 million playing golf. But anyway, um, I, I just don't think that the pros that are really, you know, in it for solid money um, and care about the money primarily, you know, whereas like a Nakamura might play just for fun. I mean, I think that yeah, I really think that those guys, you got to give them at least like $20,000 or something. I mean, it's got to be something significant to get Kramnik out there. He doesn't like to risk his rating points in open tournaments. Um, I don't think so, you know. So the they must be getting really nice appearance fees. They don't care. They're not there for the prize. I mean, if they win the prizes, it's nice. You know, it's a nice bonus, but... Um, they, they're there for appearance fees. I, I'm just curious how much. I don't know if it's possible to find out. It's probably like secret, secret information. Um, all right, well, now what am I going to do? Did I really think this through all the way? I just thought, oh, well, I have a better pawn structure. Yeah, I mean, I guess I let him trade queens. It's not an issue. Actually, he, he really, trading queens leaves him kind of in a bad way here. I guess I expected him to play knight takes pawn actually <laughs> right what do i do take with the king and then put it on e2 or do i take with the knight here the knight is so valuable controlling central squares i don't really want to move it away i feel like i'm up material but i'm not i'm i'm simply up like structure so now i can go up material finally i don't see any reason why not I know my king is in the center, but I think I should be okay with that. A pawn is... I've got a pawn plus a threat on e6. 
Now yeah, maybe a6 or something he can throw in. This is a really crazy game today. Maybe I had better. I don't know. Maybe I'm cashing in my chips here too quickly. A6 I just take with the bishop. Okay. I can't castle though. This is this is a serious handicap with all the lines open and my king on d1. I'm not really thrilled about it. So maybe knight takes e5 isn't even the best move. I'm not sure. Um, did you see James Tarjan interview? He looks so happy. No, where was that? On, uh, some chess.com thing? Yeah. You know, it's Tarjan, but he, you know, he calls himself Tarjan. Um, the name is Hungarian. But, um, but I guess his family, you know, was, his whole family just never, like, used the, the real, um, the real pronunciation. Macro is 42. It's pretty good for, for 1652. He hung in there. So Tarjan is an old, you know, an old, what is he, an IM? Who made a comeback, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's happy to be there, man. He was a strong player in the 70s and 80s. It's really, it must be weird to be like the oldest player at a tournament. I'm getting there. Um, oh, he is a GM. Okay, I forgot. Well, I never actually met him. Are you sure he's a, he is a GM? I guess so. All right. Yeah, I guess he's a GM. He didn't play. You're right. He got the GM title and then quit chess. That was it. He just got the title, then he quit chess. Now he's back. Like 30 years later, after not playing for like 30 years. Zen Chess is challenging me. A plus three. Weird game. Um, who is the old dude? Oh, did did Tarjan, Tarjan beat Kramnik? Are you kidding me? Are these two comments connected? Um, it's also weird to be the only woman that isn't a child at a tournament. I agree, little penguin. Um, I agree. You know, it's it's uh, it's got to be weird. Um, and it's also weird when you're the only like middle-aged player and everyone is like a child. Um, not enough, you know, I don't know how it is like um, in European countries. Well, I know how it is in Hungary, but um, you know, there's there's a fair amount of older players, middle-aged players, but in the United States, um, it's like depressing to go to a tournament if you're over the age of 30, because like uh, really like, it seems like there's only little kids, you know, and um, and the adults like don't they don't want to play anymore because they feel like what what am I doing here, you know? This is just like a kiddie tournament. So, I think like the U.S. Chess Federation is pretty messed up, like many things. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I was supposed to play weird openings, and I messed up. All right, got distracted with the conversation. How can I play a weird opening now? Well, Zen Chess played the Queen's Gambit, accepted. Zen Chess. This was supposed to be a weird opening. Oh, well, say la vie. I mean, there's not way, really, what am I going to do? Like, you know, Rook G1 or something? I can't really make it a weird opening now. I messed up. I played D4 without thinking, and then I... I don't know how to make it strange now. So we'll just have to accept this is a non-weird non opening and move on. I mean, what else can I play? I, I don't know. Queen A4 check. I wouldn't call it a weird opening. <laughs> it's like an obscure, slightly obscure variation. All right. Can you post links here? Sideshow Bob. Slideshow Bob. Oh, so Tarjan beat Kramnik? Oh my god. No wonder he had an interview. Wow, that's insane. That's insane, dude. 
Oh my god, can you imagine not playing for 30 years and like coming back and beating Kramnik? This isn't like his first tournament though. He's He's been playing, you know, for like a year or something like that. So he's, he's serious and coming. He's like serious about playing. I mean, he'll never be like a top player, but I mean, he's still, I guess, GM strength. But still, it's amazing to be Kramnik. I mean, for a 2500 Grandmaster to be Kramnik is like almost unheard of. That's crazy. And it's a fairly long time control. Um, I like the time control at Isle of Man, actually. It's longer than the normal FIDE time control. It's like 40 moves in, in 100 minutes with uh, with 50, 50 minutes for the next 20 moves, and then like 15 minutes. So it's a little more of like an older tradition. Not really traditional, but an old. it's longer than the standard FIDE, which is 90, 90 minutes for 40 moves, 30 minutes for... So that's good for the older player, I would think. You know, Tarjan was used to 40 and 2, Sun Death 1, you know, like another hour after that, probably 7, 8 time controls, 7, 8 hour time controls, like I played when I was younger. And, um, you know, probably the longer time control benefits him more than, say, Kramnik, who's used to the FIDE time control. The Kramnik could play anything. I thought you play e4. Yeah, I should have played e4. But this is this is cool. This is a sharp line. Um, a sharp line which I don't know that well actually. I think statistically, like this variation score is pretty well for White. Um, Zenchess is playing the sharpest response. Now, I don't know if I'm supposed to play like knight g5 here. I think that's a move. But if he plays this for black, he probably knows it better than me. I, I simply never really played this line in a couple of offhand blitz games. Um, a couple offhand blitz games with both colors, probably, but... I have played similar lines in in the Slav where I gambit the pawn, and so the structure at least is is pretty familiar to me in the ideas. I guess knight g5 f6 feels like a line, if I remember correctly. Other moves, well, maybe a4 is supposed to be played. It's very similar to the to the Geller Gambit. I didn't see the game. I'll have to check it out, guys. The Tarjan game. Tarjan is it's a Hungarian name, um, but Jim's family, I guess, you know, is like second generation. They, I don't even know if his father or mother was was from Hungary. I mean, maybe they were like already there. Maybe his grandparents came from Hungary. Who knows? But um, but from what I understand, he goes by Tarjan, which is funny. It's actually like a place here in Hungary. There's like a village called Sayotarian. Um, all right, knight takes c3, b takes c. And, um, but he's one of these California based players and I, I'm East Coast. I never met that guy or, you know, even saw him in my life. Well, again, he probably quit chess around the time when I was starting. Um, or even earlier, probably the mid 80s, early 80s. B takes C. Anyway, so Kramnik, Kramnik not having a very good year. I am, like last year, I thought he had a good chance to challenge Carlson for the World Championship if he had been allowed in the candidates tournament. But now I don't think he's, he's not the same Kramnik he was last year. Um, I'm wondering about this move order here, because e6 is supposed to be an idea for me. But I guess he doesn't have time to play e6. This is probably still book. I can play e6, and I think they're supposed to play f6. And then I'm not sure, knight h4? Is that book? And then what do I do after g6? Crazy stuff that I don't know. E6, F6, Knight H4, G6, and then what do I do after that? 
what would I do to continue my my violent attack? I mean, I know the queen d5 is, is a big idea for black. I've got to be prepared for that. All right. Well, I don't know. I'm going to just invent something here. From my experience playing the white side of the slot. Anyway, we got a gambit kind of position, so it kind of compensates for me forgetting that it's Weird Wednesday and I'm playing unusual openings. Zen chess good, because I don't really know it either. I know analogous lines in the Geller Gambit of the Slav, and I have looked at this line in some old books. But, you know, browsing over variations... I was actually, at one time, thinking about playing the Queen's Gambit Accepted, but... In limited, limited trial trials, I had very bad results. Um, now he's copying copying my ideas. Um, okay, well, it doesn't really threaten anything, right? This is my main idea. Get my rook in the game. Deep, huh? Artificial castling. Bishop e2 and then king king over here. Yeah, so anyway, Kremnik gets his appearance fee, but loses all his rating points. Hey, Spinal Tap Chess, what's up, man? Late night stream. Good to have you, buddy. You still owe me a beer the next time I'm in Philadelphia. I'd love to play in the World Open again. But man, I'm, I'm pretty old to play two rounds a day. I don't know if I can handle it. It was tough when I was like 20 years old. But I guess you haven't been playing the World Open yourself. The World Open is this open tournament that's held in Philadelphia every year. And um, that's my... Kind of where I grew up. <clears throat> and played a lot of those tournaments back in the day. In that area. I've been living in Hungary since 2004. For those of you that wondered. Um... I was thinking of changing my federation to Hungary so I could play in the European Championship. It's really, it's rip-off and zero chance to win anything. <laughs> it sounds like a casino game or something. Can I play like Knight G5? No. Yeah, actually, Spark, Sparkle Horse. Spinal Tap always bothers me because he's got the same amount of syllables as my name on Lee Chess. And uh, about the same name length. I start getting us confused. Spinal Tap Chess and Sparkle Horse. They're both three syllables starting with S. Um, okay, Knight D7. Now, I'd love to play Knight to G5, but what am I going to do there, really? He could play anything, like h6. Damn. The problem here is that he's getting ready to, to do something bad to me. He's going to try to hurt me. So I need to find some sort of threat somewhere. <clears throat> Knight G5, H6, doesn't work. Bishop E2. I just can't even see how I can make a threat in two moves in this position. If I had two moves in a row. Maybe being in time pressure will will um, force me to find something. I really need like three moves to do any damage here. But he's not developed his king side at all. You know, I mean, it seems like that should 
that should benefit me at least. Is he never going to develop his king side? We're down to one minute. Yeah, we've occasionally played a couple games here. Guys, if you want to challenge me, anything between 5 plus 3 and 8 plus 3, Spinal Tap is welcome to challenge too. I'm not going to duck him, but he's usually pretty tired, you know. It's like 4 a.m. for him. Um, almost 5. Do you know anything about this line? Spinal Tap Chess? I've never played this two knights gambit. I don't know what it's called, you know, against the Queen's Gambit Accepted. Um... I remember once I played a training game against my friend Joe Fang with black in this line. But I played differently than, than Zen Chess did. And uh, I don't think I've ever played the line with white in my life. Um, my plan is to play Rook G3 and then late G5 probably. But I need to play Rook G3 to defend my G2 pawn. If I play Knight G5, he's just taking here. You know, that's that's the issue. So I need one more move before I can do anything active. Now I'm thinking about the You're Welcome song. <laughs> oh no. I hate that when a song gets stuck in your head and you just can't get rid of it. Whoa, Castle's Queen side. Never before seen in this line. That's, that's actually... pretty insane all right well here we are everybody's happy he got to castle I get to try to do something aggressive either knight g5 or knight d2 he's stopping option one crazy Am I supposed to take here? That doesn't seem right. But nothing seems right here. Alright. I don't know. I'm about to lose on time. I'm probably busted. Probably busted. I thought I might get some threats against his king. I expected him to play c5 earlier instead of castling queenside. I mean, that was like far more, kind of a far more natural approach. Now what am I supposed to do? Just making it up as I go along here. Hope for something. Hope for something good to happen. Looks like I'm just getting brutalized. Nice game by Zen Chess. Claims he never played this position before. I'm just down, down a pawn for nothing. Down two pawns for nothing, excuse me.
Or maybe he blundered. Could have just taken on d4 with like a winning position. He said he just let me take here. Maybe this is still good for him somehow. I'm probably losing anyway. It was stupid to trade queens, but his queen is so strong there. His queen is just so strong. It's like I'm falling apart here. Maybe not. Ooh. You're not supposed to have your king on d5. That's too active, dude. That's a nice move. Now I'm lost again. I probably shouldn't trade rooks. Definitely a master level game by Black. This almost has to be lost. probably a bad move what am I doing I let him in there now ah, this was a blunder <laughs> counter blunder it's a draw oh no if you just take with the king, you're winning. I'm going to play for a win now. I could be winning. I'm sure that I messed this up. Come on. Oh no. Now it's a draw again. God, this was like the worst ending of all time. I think I was winning for one moment. I wasn't winning. Wait. I had to be winning at some point. <laughs> That's the important thing in this awful play by me. 
that I was winning at some point. Um, maybe I wasn't winning. Seriously? Yeah. My god, I wasn't winning. Wow, that's crazy. I thought I might be winning there. Alright. Well, it was a disgraceful opening and endgame by me. What happened here? It's all main line. He doesn't know the line. He never played it before. Okay, bishop b7 is rare. Why is it so bad? No, it's a line. Why did all the games disappear? Okay, it's a glitch. Yeah, e6, f6. I know that's nothing. So h4 is a bad move, apparently. I don't like e6, though. I'm sorry. g3, bishop b2, bishop a3. Apparently, I have to play e6 here. Like it or not. I did not know about this idea. e6, f6, knight g5. What? This has to be a complete computer glitch. Computer was, like, suggesting knight g5 a minute ago. Something wrong with my with my CPU. Um, I think it just gave that line. Yeah. All right, guys. Anyway, it was fun. Tricks only. What's up? I don't know this line. Okay, somebody trolling me? Wow. <clears throat> yeah, that is not me. Whoops, sorry. I almost like banned Chiefs Chiefs of Bull by accident. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry, Chief Chief of Bull. I had to ban myself from the room. Um Sorry Chief of Bull. I clicked on the wrong person, so if you're listening, please come back. <laughs> I clicked on you by accident. Um F takes E six here is not good. Black has to play F six. And now well, I'm surprised somebody didn't already take that name on Twitch. He doesn't have this, the streamer signal in front of him, of course. Um, but I'm surprised nobody, in all the trolls that I've had on my stream, like, nobody's taken that name already? That's that's sort of hard to believe. How is that even possible? Hundreds of trolls, and nobody thought to take my... To take my... Um... Yeah, actually, how is that possible? Is that some sort of trick? How did he take my name? That is my name. How does he have an account with my name? How is that possible? Actually, it's some kind of trick, like there's an invisible character in the name or something? Like Slaggy Space or something? Um, how does he do that? No, it's a capital I. Really? Capital I? Doesn't look like capital I on my, on my screen. It looks like lowercase to me too. Um, you can see when you try to type at and your names. That's weird. It came through on mine looking like that, too. Capital L, you mean? Capital I instead of capital L. Oh, capital I instead of L. Yeah. All right, well, he got his five minutes of attention. I and L are exactly the same. All right. Yeah, that's great. So we're back to um, to this game. Okay, I'm supposed to play e6. I'll have to look at that, but I don't play this line. Anyway, I'm playing weird openings today. Any other subscribers that wanted to challenge me? Zenchess, you you were one of many players I have escaped a dead lost position against. But, um... I didn't play that the way I meant to play it at the end. I, I mean, I have to put my king on b2. I, I played this, like, ridiculously. This was almost like a mouse slip. I mean, I have to put my king on b2. So I just like tragically blundered, but I guess I'm in virtual Zuzhuang anyway. Um, 
what's happening here? If I put my king on there, then I move my... Yeah, you're going to play bishop d2 next. Bishop e5. Bishop e1. I think, you know, it's not that easy for him to make progress here. I mean, I'm sure black was winning before if he had played it a little differently. You see, like, the computer is like the king has to come back around, probably. It's not that simple to win for black. I mean, I'm sure that it's winning somehow. Um, but I obviously, I meant to put my king on b2 and then blundered. Anyways, um, pretty pretty nice game by black. Here he's just totally winning. I mean, the king is actually well placed on d5. You could have played any number of... any number of ways. I don't know. I mean, it's not that easy to win. All right, Magash, 1983. I said I'm going to play unusual openings. Let's play the... What's that called? The birds opening? It's crazy to me that f6 doesn't win, but check it out. Yeah, I, I thought I was winning. It's like it felt like I was winning. His king is so far away. And I thought, oh man, there's got to be a win here. But according to the engine, at least briefly, there's no win. Not like I deserve to win because I was totally busted. But just once I got to that position, I'm a little surprised that it's not. Okay, Dutch. Dutch reversed. Um, Bird's opening is a favorite of my, <laughs> my friend Jeroen here, who's sometimes a moderator in the stream. Can you play the Budapest? I like to play the Budapest Fajarowicz variation. I never played before. Megash is a Polish chess legend. Spinal Tap Chess. We'll miss you. Spinal, you're going to go to sleep finally. 5 a.m. How's your, uh... How's your, um... Insomnia doing, man? When I came back from, from the U.S., I was in the U.S. in... What's going on, my gosh? I was in the U.S. In, in July and August, and I had such bad jet lag that I couldn't sleep for, like, the first two weeks. It was a real struggle to do the streams here. Okay, G6. One has to be a bit careful about their move order. But I am playing, like, the white, you know tempo up thing so I guess it's not as dangerous as playing the Dutch we do have an extra tempo if they try to do something like knight h6 we probably modify the move order you know and play specifically against that kind of setup I've played this a lot myself, knight h6 and c6 and different stuff without c5. I like playing against the Dutch. I have a pretty good score. I think chess base, one of those chess base analysis things showed that it was one of my best, one of my best openings with white. So don't X for me. Tricks only. Guys are discussing the line. I had f6, bishop takes f6, king takes f6, king d6, king g7, king e7. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a draw. That last game. Visually, it looked like his king was out of play, but if he's precise, it's a draw. I got, I got kind of excited. I, th <laughs> I thought I was going to swindle a full point there. The bishop g4 is a line. Yeah, I mean, bishop g4 is always a line. You can play like d5 and bishop g4 against everything. You can play it against b3, you can play it against g3, you can play it against knight f3, e3, you can play it against b4, you can play it against the king's Indian attack with knight f3, g3. Literally, you can play d5, bishop g4 against pretty much anything except for like the queen's gambit. And I think Chigora might have even tried that. 
No, you can do it against... Okay, I think against d4, d5, knight f3, bishop g4, Chigorin played as well. Um, and that, I don't know what the status of that is. Maybe it's perfectly okay. I'm not sure. Um, you can basically <laughs> do it against everything. It's the Tory attack reversed. Okay, so it's a, it's a standard reverse Dutch, but he hasn't committed his C-pawn to C5. So he has other setups he can play, like b6, a quieter setup with b6, um, or c6, like I've played a lot with white and black in these kind of positions. Just c6 threatening stuff. I think that c6 works better with a knight on h6 probably, though. Honestly. Because you have the bishop, the bishop and queen bearing down on like b2. That's a line. With a knight on f6, though. He probably should play either c5 or or like b6, bishop b7. I guess there, there really aren't a lot of other options. I mean, it might be possible to play like c6, knight bd7, queen c7, and play for e5. But this is, this is a common position with colors reversed, which I don't really know very well, so I'm probably in trouble here. I don't know both sides of this line or either side of this line because I never played b3 um, I never played these quiet positional lines against Leningrad so I don't know the position from his perspective and I've never really played the Dutch except in some blitz games um, but we'll just play on intuition here I'm supposed to play probably e4 at some point but I don't know about the timing of it am I supposed to do it right away e4 pawn takes pawn knight d2 or something bishop b7 knight takes e4 knight takes e4 bishop takes e4 queen d4 check and like black's winning that's sort of perverse yeah if i try to do e4 pawn takes pawn knight g5 bishop b7 well i don't have to take back right away okay e4 pawn takes pawn I could also do knight c3 first, and then um, on, on bishop b7, then I go e4, pawn takes pawn, then play like knight c3. That seems logical. Let's do it this way. Then we'll play e4 next. And then we'll just get our pawn back in one of these kind of standard king's indian e king's indian e type of things. Black's really solid, though. This seems like... Seems like a solid line. Can I take back on e4? I don't really like it. I don't really want to take with a pawn on e4 that much. But black looks super solid here. Very safe type of setup. Maybe there's something more subtle I can do other than playing for e4. Some slower setup that keeps the tension in the position more. We're all Europeans here. Your English doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you want to play a few games later in the stream? I'm going to start a bit earlier with my stream because the World Cup final, sure. Um, yeah, we can play. Um, definitely. Let me play this Chess 960 game, and then after that, um, we'll play a couple games. Does that sound cool? So that'll give you like 20 minutes to do whatever. Um, tricks only. To get ready. I want to play the chess 960 and then and then we'll play a couple games. Sounds like a good deal. If that's good for you. Oh wow, he played E6, so that changes everything now. Um, well I, I'm I think I'm happy to play this. Space advantage. I mean I think he should take here. Low you know it's very low rent type of position. Um, now it's turning into a, a, a full board French Kings in the attack. But anyway, I mean, I'm sure that his game is still reasonable. This knight, where does Mr. Knight go? Am I supposed to play d4 anyway? 
Mm, I, don't, I don't really like it. What am I supposed to do here? Oh, man, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm kind of stuck. Alright, dude, I'll see you in like 20 minutes. Whenever you you want. Um, so we'll play a couple games with tricks only. That'll be cool. Spinal tap chest is too tired. All right. C five. Now I could play C four. It's worth considering, but it weakens my position too. I'm gonna get my rook off the long island. This is kind of a marginal move. I mean, maybe I could play b4 at some moment. Take play to the other side of the board. Just a safe move. I didn't want to give him any kind of counterplay by playing d4 and c4, those moves. I'm playing more like a traditional style here. I can play d4 though. It's probably not a bad idea. But if I was going to play d4, maybe I should have put my bishop on e3 to begin with. Okay, he's starting to get a time advantage. Um, well, I'm just going to play both sides of the board a little bit. Maybe b4 if I can get it in. Try to chip away on the queen side. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous he could break with f6 at some point, honestly, you know. That's why I haven't committed to some kind of crazy wing attack with like g4. I mean, I'm expecting f6, giving him a little bit of counterplay. He'll destroy my pawn on e5. I could definitely have played g4 though. Now it could get really weird. All right, this is going to be a real wrestling match after this. Hopefully, you know, he doesn't have time to break through on the queen side, and I can go and kill him on the king side. If he lets me get in d4, it'll lock up the center, and I'll go for the king side. But maybe he has some other resources, too. He played f6 now. That's um, interesting. So the game is, like, really weird and complicated play on both sides not your typical king's indian attack I'm, I'm playing on both sides of the board black looks okay but he's got some weaknesses too i mean both of us have made a number of pawn moves so i would evaluate this as pretty equal hard to say who's better here really maybe um you know i mean he does have a strong pawn on d5 that's kind of the most impressive feature of the position his pawn on d5 looks pretty good but he has a fair amount of pawn weaknesses so I don't think it's that easy to evaluate now this move wow I don't really want to give up that square to be honest knight c3 this is kind of crazy and complicated He was expecting me to take, but I mean, his pieces are getting pretty active on e5. I don't really want to bring his knights into e5. And um, this move creates maximum counterplay for me. He doesn't want to lock it up with d4 either. It's a little awkward for him to protect his pawn. Maybe knight d4. Actually, knight d4, I have double capture on d4 and d5. So this move causes some trouble, I think. It would have really been good for him for me to take on e5. Whoops. Um, he was hoping for this capture, you know, just routinely capture on e5. I think that black might be pretty active there. But now it's not. 
It's not so clear. Like, pawn takes f4, knight takes d5 looks good for white. Although, maybe he could try that. Give up his dark squared bishop, even. Like, pawn takes f4, knight takes d5, pawn takes g3, knight takes f6 check. Um, that's pretty interesting. Another good move. Hmm. I don't know what to do here. I mean, temporarily up a pawn, though that pawn isn't, the pawn isn't real well protected. If, um, if knight, knight f5, knight e2, I should be okay. Threatening d4. Okay, what's up now? Just like C3. Gotta watch for the G3 square. But I'm winning. Yeah, you just allowed the family fork here. Interesting game. Um, I think it was just really f f roughly even. Um, yeah, so apparently my move scores the best. Knight c3. The expert Heinrich Danielson has played this twice with white. It says the engine says that black is... <laughs> okay, equal. It should be 7 e4. Danielson is like the strongest player who plays the birds opening on a regular basis. Apparently this is not so good. I mean, he needs to take here. Maybe this isn't good. D takes e4. Knight g5. Queen d4 check. There's only one game with queen d4 check. Knight a6 makes sense too. But I really think that's the critical line. So, Megash played e6. This was a little slow. And after e5, I should be slightly better. But it was unclear. Um, f6 was really a fighting move. And I thought this is equal. But... It's very like a closed Sicilian. This move was given a mistake because of knight g5. I did not see knight g5. Instead, I played the other way to try to hit d5. Now I have an advantage. He never got his pawn back. Okay, man, good game. We'll be back to Lucky Kentucky Chess 960, and then I'm going to maybe try to play a couple games. Oh, man. Um, I'm going to try to play a couple games with, uh, with tricks only. All right, Lucky Kentucky, thanks for joining us. Yeah, man, thank you for the game. Um, the computer says I'm slightly better, but I really think you should just take on E4. I, the engine says that black's even better after that in the opening. Um, I don't think you're worse. So that looks like standard. Maybe white has to play something more, less direct, let's say, you know, objectively. I like the setup that he played there. Okay, so chess 960. We'll think ahead of the bishop and, and then think later. 
Um, Bishop g7. Modern defense. As long as I don't have a knight, and I have my rooks on normal squares. As long as I don't have a knight on a1 or h1. h8 or h8. Or a8 or a8. Basically, the bird's opening seems like it's nothing more than the closed Sicilian to me. You're just like playing the closed Sicilian, but you're playing e4 10 moves later. It's not like a big achievement or something. Um, 93. I just feel like I'm playing the Dutch every game now. f5. It's a great Dutch. I've got both bishops. Good diagonals. This looks like an excellent Dutch. My king's on, on the queen side, which is kind of weird. Okay, white's knights are not bad. This bishop is going to have to come out on h2. I'm feeling the London system love here. We're definitely playing d6 at some point. Though then where's my knight going to go? If I play d6 to neutralize the h2 bishop, where do I plan on putting my knight? That's a problem. Anyway, guys, um, tomorrow night I have a subscriber stream, 7 p.m. on Thursdays. Knight f4. That's a lot of knight moves. 1, 2, 3. Three knight moves thus far. I hate putting my knights on b3 or b6, but I might it might be best. Not that easy here. There's something about this that's kind of strong, actually. I don't have h6, g5. He could actually do h4, h5. I have basically no way to get rid of that knight on f4. I mean, I guess if I could achieve e5 somehow, but how the heck am I going to do that? I think this move, queen e8, could be interesting. Feels very time consuming, but I'm seriously worried about this. And this also supports e5, potentially. I'm still. <laughs> I'm still on last game where I'm, I'm playing e5 in the Dutch. e4 was the case last game, but I want to get rid of that strong knight on f4, and there's just no other way to challenge it other than by playing like d6 and e5 directly. You get an insight into the way I think about the game. It's not the only way to think about the game, but chess 960, I'm, I'm pretty self-taught. Is there any kind of a is there any kind of written instructional material on Chess 960? I mean, has anybody actually written a book about Chess 960 yet? I would be surprised if they haven't. Just started to, I just wondered that now, you know, I mean. With all the chess publications out there, there has, there almost has to be like a Chess 960 book. I had never seen one. My king is just chilling here on the queen side. That's the other thing about chess 960 that bothers me. Like, I don't know what's called a king side and what's called a queen side. Is this my king side or is this my queen side? Anyway, guys, we play one or two chess 960 games usually, if I can get the chance. Um, the other guys that are challenging me, I'm going to take a break to... Um, to play with, with tricks only a couple games. And then um, we'll see how much time is left. We have about an hour left. So nobody's answering me. Is this my king side or is this my queen side? It's a Leningrad Dutch where I castled on, on my queen side. That's really weird. I'm supposed to be over here on g8. 
Maybe it's not a bad thing. In this particular setup, my king feels fairly safe there. I think my my stream is frozen. My own personal connection to Twitch may have been kind of frozen up. I might have missed a few chats from you guys. 45 viewers. Please think about subscribing to the stream. Actually, I'm not sure if it's still on. Earlier this week, um, Twitch had a sale on subscriptions, so it was like half price. This, I've been waiting for this for a long time. I've been waiting for you. E5, take, take. He doesn't really have a good move there. Is H3 too slow? He just goes knight D5. It looks like I'm fine here. I mean, okay, if I take and he takes with the pawn, I play knight B6, he has D6. I have to get rid of that knight. I could also play knight B6. That's certainly not bad. Knight B6. A little bit weird. Take, take, knight d6, just blockading. Alright, we're going to go with this. At some point, I'm going to have... <clears throat> I want to blockade this. I could attack it, but d6 is too strong. Um, you know, at some point, this bishop on g7 is going to be really strong. And my other bishop is constantly pressuring d5. He's threatening... He's basically not threatening anything here. Um, I could castle both sides, depending on the circumstances. Here I have c6, but he has a tactic with queen a3 or queen b4. So I'm not quite developed enough to, um, I can castle queen side. I don't even know if that's a good move in this position. He's going to castle queen side, probably. Do I want to castle queen side or not? <clears throat> I could also play with queen e7. It's kind of slow. Slow but effective. Hmm. I mean, my queen actually had a decent diagonal there. But it's securing the knight on d6. Now he's going there. I've got to watch out for, like, queen c3, it looks like. Not really a threat, though. Um. So my plan was to play c6. Then he has queen c3, counterattacking me, which is really kind of awkward. <coughs> I may end up like putting my king back on b8 at the end of the day. For the moment, I'm on a half open file, which feels kind of dangerous, but so is he. Um, what's up guys? How does castling work? Yeah, it's confusing. I mean, it works like you can castle on either side, usually, from whatever strange position your king is in. I want to play c6, but I don't think I have it. We'll go back to, um, back to b8. He'll probably do the same at some point.
I feel like I'm finally maybe ready to play c6 potentially. If I can get it in, it would be good. He has the weird move queen c3, but there there are some problems with that, like knight e4. If queen c3, knight e4, and I'm attacking f2 and the d5 pawn again, so I think that's probably just good for me. Not that easy to see what he does here. You know, it would be nice to, like, attack my king, but it's hard for him to get his rook lifted to, uh, to launch a double threat against, like, a7. His pieces aren't that capable of attacking my king. And I'm threatening this. <clears throat> if I do play c6, he can move the queen to, like, c3. Yeah, now he's threatening a kind of cheapo. That makes some sense. I have knight e4 even here. But my knight is such a good blockader, I don't feel like even messing with it. I want to leave this guy here, not necessarily lunge in. So I'll just play, I'll just play g g5 and stuff. Okay, now he pinned me. That was a good move. Maybe I was wrong. I guess I should have played knight knight e4. Queen c5. Okay, now knight e4 doesn't work. I have f4, which is kind of funny. I'm not sure if it's even useful. <clears throat> I need to do something anyway. We're about to run out of time, so this is about to get kind of weird. He can't take, I hope. <laughs> oh my god. Takes, check. It's an in-between move, a different in-between move. Fortunately, I have queen takes. Should be a good position for me, but I'm not really sure what I should play here. Play the obvious. Maybe I should just trade queens next with queen f5. Have a slight advantage. May not be enough to win though. I'm a tiny bit better. It's probably not enough. Yeah, he blundered. I think he blundered with this. Still though, it's not it's not game over. He's going to lose his e6 pawn.
I'll try to create like a force field and <clears throat> get my king to the center. I was going to go to d7, that would be pretty stupid. All of his pawns are on the right color, which is good for him. But he's a clear pawn down, so... My knight is, um... It's kind of ill in here. But a pawn is a pawn. This isn't so easy with my pawns on the wrong color on the other side there. Could be a could be a technical problem. H five. Very well, maybe a draw. I mean, I just. Knight f4 is. is no good. I don't know. Kind of doubt I'm winning. You play h4, double-edged. <laughs> One would assume this is a draw. But maybe I can get my knight on c4 and do something. Not going to work here. Maybe bishop b8 was better to hit my a7 pawn last move. Is my knight going to be, like, trapped or something? It's still probably a draw. I'm going to try to play a couple games with tricks only after this. I don't know, is there any possible way to win this position? I don't think so. This is just a dead draw. He's thinking about a5. Um, let me just play a couple more moves. <laughs> just to make sure I declined his draw. I guess there's no physical way to win this. Doesn't seem so. All right. Oh, I'm gonna lose on time, all right. He, he took it seriously. All right, there. Um, let's see what the engine says. Obviously the final position is not win. Was I ever winning? I kind of doubt it. Um, even if you go back here to this minor piece ending, actually there he could have played h4. The engine doesn't like it, okay. Um, let's see. Let's go back to this ending though, before I start. Um, so I thought this position... I mean, what am I supposed to do if I don't do king e6? It's the only move. Despite being like a clear pawn down on the surface, um, this is actually pretty tough. I had to play c5 now, not allowing that knight d4 move. I didn't realize how important this is to play c5 here and not allow him to go check, 
with threats of like coming in on b5, coming in on f5. If I play c5, I guess I still had some winning chances though. Truly, um, it seems like a kind of position that may well be a draw, even though he's a pawn down. He has a good bishop. Um, the fact that bishop, bishops are on the board give him good drawing chances. I think this is probably a draw with best play by both sides. It didn't take long to what? That's unfair. What happened? Shower, check, breakfast, opening preparation. Yeah, weird openings. <laughs> I think he's just kidding around. Um, all right, let's play a couple games with tricks only. What are we going to play here? Um, what time control? Um, let's let's challenge him to to five plus three. I don't know if he. Uh, I don't know if he usually plays like increment. Do we have a challenge from? Yeah, he has challenged me. Okay. Um, all right. So good luck, man. Um, five plus three gives me just enough time to kind of. You already challenged me. He's ready. All right. Uh, I said I was going to play unusual openings today, so we're going to stick to stick to what I don't know. Um, the last time I played this, I lost to Stefan Bromberger. That was like <laughs> the last B3 I ever played was like eight years ago. Um, but I like to play it in the weird opening stream. Yeah, that's what Bromberger played against me. And I did, I did something. This is a very trendy line. This, this is supposed to be good. I would recommend it. Um, I did something like takes on c6 unprovoked, I think, against him. I lost really badly in that game. But I saw that Naka played this later. Um, I didn't lose because of the opening against Bromberger in this position. I don't know what I... I just didn't feel comfortable playing b3 and not knowing anything about it. I just didn't feel confident over the board. Um, I don't know. But it looks okay. It's basically like a hippo. Bromberger played e, you know, I let him play e4 against me before I had played d3 or something. It was, it was pretty weird. He got a, he got a big initiative with that. So, I mean, I know that Hikaru has played this position before with the unprovoked exchange on c6 and d takes c. I just, I don't remember what I did against Bromberger. Maybe Bromberger played like e4, like knight e2, e4 something weird and I just freaked out and lost um, it just looks like an exchange Lopez you know I mean that's kind of what my thinking was some kind of reasonable exchange Lopez all right it's basically a blitz game so we can't aim for we can't aim for perfection here um, Black's position is fine. My position is okay. He's obviously not castling queenside. It's not chess 960. Um, I was thinking about that. <laughs> After playing chess 960, it's kind of weird to go back to normal chess. I keep expecting him to castle queenside. Nimzovich. Our pawn structure is sound. Trading pieces. Yeah, I do have some dark square weaknesses. Admittedly. Yeah, this this is a reasonable plan in general. Black has less space and he's... My queen on b2 would sort of suck, wouldn't it? But I don't know what else to do. Um, I don't really want my dark squares to get invaded over here. So it's a very technical kind of reduced material middle game. Both sides are okay, more or less. I never played this kind of position, but it's weird Wednesday and I like to play unusual openings. Um, now F4 is tempting, chipping away at his center, but I've got to watch this dark square stuff. He's got like queen c5 check, queen e3, or something along those lines. Double attacking my knights. It's a little scary. 
he could play g5, but I don't think he's going to go to that that level. Um, g5. You could play g5. Then maybe I'll change the, the theme here. I don't know. I've already foreshadowed my plan. Do we play d4 or f4? Possibilities for both. There's no f4 now. A d4 might be okay. It's basically an exchange Lopez. Knight takes or queen takes. I was sort of lamenting my queen there, but he's going to gain time on my queen in some lines. It's a bit awkward. The knight threatens to go to f5. And if queen e5, I have knight c4. I've got to be careful with my queen getting out of play on b2. Okay, knight f5. Is he just going to go right into an ending? Maybe I should play knight c4 first. And then if knight e5, knight f5, which is taking his queen with check. Now he's first to the open file here, which um, represents something. We're playing uh, International Master Tricks only. An exhibition match here. Um, you're listening to both players' commentary. I didn't realize he was streaming already. Wow. That's what he said, but I don't pay attention. I'm famous for not paying attention. All right. In one ear, out the other. We've got a strong knight, and we're going to mess up his pawn structure. So. I don't think I'm worse, but on the other hand, he might have enough activity to balance the structural inferiority. Um... I'd like a king and pawn endgame, please. Can you hook me up with a king and pawn endgame? Yes. Dr. Dynamic found the best move. Definitely. You know, now I'm a little bit worried about this. Maybe I'm exaggerating. I don't think I should be worse. I better watch out for tactics. He's thinking. I never thought he would trade queens. I think you should take back with the pawn there and kind of maintain an initiative. But he's got a cheapo that I missed. No, I'm having hallucinations. Sorry. I'm starting to have hallucinations. That's not good. All right. So I don't think he should trade queens. Not like he's lost, but um, my preference would be not to trade queens. So I feel, I feel safer, and I'm safer from his tricks, basically with the queens off the board. I'm just waiting to drop a one-move tactic with like rook takes f5 or something. Um, my plan is to, to get my king back in the in the game. His pawn e5 is actually kind of awkward. That's interesting. So he's sort of stuck though. He can't play g6, yeah. He's going to bring his king back around. I don't know where I want my knight to be. If he takes an f5, he'll probably hold on. 
e3 takes away a, a king's a good king square king square and now he's got cheapos based on my yeah let's let's do this i'm gonna have my knight on a sucky square for a while just so i can get my king to the center of the board we'll sacrifice um knight placement okay that's kind of irritating I have to go here, not to fix his pawn structure. And maybe we can creep our, our knight back to e3. Rook e1. Um, well, he's starting to put pawns on dark squares. I guess I could play rook d3 if I had to. I really like this. a3. And if a4, b4. Probably my best chance. Rookie one. I don't know if I'm playing too passively, but I don't know what else to do. I thought he was like all tricks, but he's basically playing positionally. He also went out of his way to trade queens. Now I've got to play b4. I don't want pawns on the wrong color here. And now we have a problem. Whoops. We have a problem. We has a problem. That basically sucks. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to play rook takes rook. This is a disaster. All right, now we might be slightly worse. Man. It looks really ridiculous, <laughs> this position. What am I doing here? All right. Getting outplayed pretty badly in the middle of this game, this ending. C3. Man. Feels like I'm playing Magnus. The end game technique. F4. I'm just hoping I can just hang on. I went from better to like clearly worse uh, in a very short period of time playing a little bit too passively. Feels like it should be holdable. got me in pretty bad time pressure yes <sighs> Ooh, this is nasty
about to flag. Man, his technique is good. Probably losing here. Now nah, I'm lost now. This has to be lost for me. It's a kind of weird mouse slip there. Nice technique. End game. Yeah, he end game me. Good game. All right, man. Nice end game technique. I think. Um, I don't know if I ever had, I probably had a draw, but I would have had to play really accurately. Um, let's see. This looks pretty rough. I think it's lost at that point. But even so, it was really, I think this position, I made one slip, like G4 is like the losing move, it looks like. I have to play only move King C2 here. I'm probably just barely hanging on um, in this position if I play perfectly, but I had like seven seconds and he had 24. It was it was too tough. All right, man, good game. Let's um let's play a rematch. How do I do a rematch? Where are you? If I go back to the game, maybe I can do. I still can't do a rematch. All right, we'll just have to challenge him manually. Um, Standard real time, real time, fake time. I was expecting all kinds of tactical tricks from him, but it was like all technique. He's prepared his end game technique. Um, all right, variant standard real time, five plus three, this looks good. All right. Well, I mean, the main reason I play what happened? Game of board. Oh, you want to switch colors. All right. So the main reason I play with um, casual chess is because I'm like handicapped. I mean, you know, I, I'm basically giving people like two or three minutes time odds. If I'm if I'm streaming, I'm like commentating the game. It takes half of my attention. I mean, why would I want to play people rated games when uh, my attention is divided between like commentating and, and actually playing the game? I would be giving them essentially time odds I mean it doesn't make sense so in this case you know if, if it was like everybody I was playing was also doing the same thing I wouldn't mind playing rated games but um, you know you're playing a random guy who's just concentrating on the game and you're and you're like commentating I mean you're gonna be like two or three minutes behind on the clock at least if you do it the way if you commentate the way I do which is basically spending half of your energy on describing what's going on in the game um you never give us a rematch yeah this is a privilege for for title players um nice game though 
you know, like right until the end, it was very close. I could probably hold on. I should have held on, but he had me down to eight seconds and I played G4, which was the second best move. Um, all right. So H3, I have played this before. Um, I've never really been in love with this line, but it's okay for black, I guess. Bishop E7. Bishop E7. I think this is right. I think I had a game with the computer like this once. His preparation is is there. Oh, knight c3. Okay, because you can... Yeah, what am I thinking? Um, hold on a second. Did you blunder a pawn? Knight takes c3, pawn takes knight takes e5. Knight takes e5, bishop takes b5. Is there some kind of trick? I have knight takes e5 here. Nimzovich style, knight takes, bishop takes b5. Is this a trap? Queen h5, castles. No, I think he just simply, he simply overlooked a pawn. So I'm trying to think, how does this normally go for white? Um, oh, I know. Okay, so instead of knight c3, yeah, he's supposed to play bishop d3. I had a game with a computer years ago. Bishop d3, knight b4, bishop takes e4, pawn takes e4, rook takes e4, bishop c6, rook g4, um, where white has a pawn up, you know, and it's not clear I have enough compensation. I'm not sure. Maybe it's better to do, you know, like another, another line for black altogether, like g6 or something. Um, actually, come to think of it, maybe I even played this line against... No, I'm thinking I had a similar game with Prudojevic, but he might have played c3 against me. I guess if white plays c3, then then I play knight e5. Knight e5 might be a move. Yeah, piece of sheet. <laughs> He's a stream cheater. Um, well, winning a pawn isn't necessarily um, decisive. Yeah, he's he's doing his own stream, so it's fair. But I don't like you know playing rated games. Okay, occasionally you like a target for people who are trolling and then they're they're cheating with computers and stuff. But um, it doesn't really it's to me it doesn't matter. I mean, if it's rated or unrated, I don't care. What's the point? The point is that we learn something from it. The one thing that I'm actually sorry for is that um, Lee Chess, the argument for playing rated games would be that Lee Chess doesn't save the games that are not rated, you know? So actually I lose all these games as far as like, what is going on? Um, what? I think he's just going berserko. He's got queen f3. Is that the point? He's creating chaos. Bishop takes c4. Knight takes c4, d takes c4. d5 or something. Queen takes, takes, takes. Bishop a3. If d takes c4, d5, that's not so clear. I feel like this is my best shot to take with the pawn. Oh my god. Tricks only. Yeah, I did not see that. It's okay. It is okay. We'll have to take, I think, and... I think we have to take. Damn, dude. That's a crazy trick. Okay, so it's it's a mess now. I am up a pawn, but my king is a little bit uns insecure. So we'll have to be careful. 
it was a nice try by tricks only to uh, to create some chaos in what otherwise would have been a very very bad position he did trick me only time to unleash my rage he's um he's created chaos and my king is a little bit open now so that uh, doesn't give me a lot of a lot of room to make mistakes I think it should be okay for me though but anytime the king is open it increases the chance of making a blunder um, the only thing that really scares me is him playing like rookie five or or rookie three um, and and rook f3 but basically his other pieces aren't that well developed so he shouldn't be better objectively queen b2 no, now I can play bishop f6, kind of tying him down. I mean, keeping him off of e5, sheltering my king. You know, I think I'm winning here. Although b5 might be... b5 might be an inaccuracy. I'm not sure. Rook b8. <laughs> I don't know, is this a good move? I was afraid of b5, a4. Maybe I'm misplaying this position. Maybe I should just give up on b5, concentrate on having a pass c pawn. Um, it's kind of a slow process. Yeah, let's, let's change the focus here a little bit. To consolidate, i um, not going to be able to play b5 right away. I think rook b8 was wrong, probably. Now I'm threatening to win a pawn again. Bishop takes d4. I don't know how important that is here, to be honest, with my king kind of open. Not sure if I would even want to win that pawn. He's, he's very tactically minded. Now I don't want him to play rook b5. And I also want to create two connected pass pawns, so that poses him some problems. He's very cagey. Clearly a cagey player. Showed good endgame technique last game. Last game was not a bad game. I was better than, than I was worse, and then I was lost. Um, I wasn't really that much better, actually. Maybe a little bit better. I don't want to exaggerate. I thought I was slightly better in the first game, but... Wow, what is going on? Okay, he's taking on e6. We can't have that. That is not allowed, dude. And now... This looks good. I could even take with the pawn. The pawn is pretty gross, though. You have to admit. He's getting some play. C3? No. I could play C3. This is going to be tricky. Wow, he took with a pawn. I thought he was going to take the other way. Wow. All right, this pawn has got to go. I really shouldn't be able to lose this position, at least, with this passed pawn. Um, my king is kind of sketchy, obviously. Nothing to do but double up behind it famous last words he's got a blockade now with uh, with which piece though no checks I should be winning but my king is a little bit open I mean he could potentially get like a perpetual check or something I guess I'm probably winning with with accurate play but it's not so easy. I don't think that it's that simple. Maybe it is. 
Um, why he not playing b5? Well, I could have played b5. You're right. But I don't think rook c7 is a bad move. Another pawn. Another pawn. Is this too greedy? Yeah, I definitely could have played b5. Now where? You really should be winning. All right. No rook d1. No, 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 no. What? All right, man. Thank you for the games. Oh, you want to play one more? All right, cool. We've got time for one more. Um, all right, this is to decide the winner of the match. So I thought I could get away with a tie, but we've got to have a decisive game. Um, all right, E4. I said I was going to play weird openings. That game, what did I do? I didn't play weird opening. That's bad. Um, okay, let's try uh, the Dunst opening, Knight C3. Sorry, guys. I failed to play on the, th on the theme of the day today, last game. I played just standard Sicilian. Um, I failed for the second time today to play an unusual opening. Knight c3 and d5. What else can we do here? Um, e4 is like main line. And now I guess we could play a lot of different things. I mean, knight, knight e2 is like the main move. I'm going to go here. Once I faced this and I wasn't really sure how to handle it, Bishop c4 is interesting. Outside the pawn chain. Let's go for it. Now, if I go, yeah, d3 is fine. Tactical wizard, what? No, dude, people have been waiting for a challenge, and we probably don't have that much time. What? Dude, it's not that often I get to play a strong player here on the stream. I think that most people appreciate that. <laughs> um, we might have one more game with, uh, with the regular players here. Wow, b5. All right. Um, kind of weird. What if I played bishop d5 and buy myself a tempo? <laughs> um, all right. It's hard to tell when people are calling you dude if they're talking to you or not. Now maybe a4? It doesn't really change the position though, does it? He just plays a6. I feel like this is kind of a fail. I'm going to have to exchange my bishop on, on c6, it looks like. I don't like that. I like the way he played with the b5 ultra ultra active how about like queen h5 whoa queen h5 does that work it's crazy i feel like hikaru queen h5 this can't be good g6 
All right, whatever, man. If I lose, I lose. It's kind of a cheapo. <laughs> this is the understatement of the day. The cheapo. Learning from, from Naka. This can't possibly be good for me. But it just will confuse my opponent a little bit. Thank you for clarifying it by calling me dude. Bishop takes e6, okay, this doesn't work. Why can't I take on d6? Because of e6, because of g6. No, you can't trick him, man, he's too good. He sees everything tactically. Objectively, this was a this was a kind of crappy idea to play queen h5, but whatever, all right. It's just a position. It's just a position now. What should I do? I don't want to play. I don't want to play f4 anymore. I had second thoughts about that. f4 will just start to put my pawns on dark squares, and um, and I think that's not what I want to do in this position. So black is better, but maybe it's not that bad for me. Where to put my queen? Maybe back on d1. Just reset back in the center. I'm, I'm worse. This opening was a fail. We tried to be creative, but he just hammered me with b5. All right. Yeah, he's very incisive in the opening. I do have b4, which would be kind of cool. I don't think that's a good idea, though. You know, opening the position for his bishops is probably a bad idea. The problem is I don't know if I have a good idea in this position. It just looks like a passive Nimzo. Um, okay, he really needs the castle king side. Don't do this opening, whatever this was. He's still not castling. Um, whatever you want to call it that I did here looks sort of dubious. Knight d7. Now what? G4. That would be a wild move. Probably not good. He can play F5. For example. Um, knight G5. Not sound. Does he not want a castle? Does he not want a castle? What's his deal here with not castling? I could still play b4. But objectively, I feel like I'm opening the position for him. Pawn takes pawn, knight takes d4. Um, also opening up pressure. Pressure for the two bishops. <laughs> Although I would think that I might have knight takes d4. The c file looks kind of bad. All right, I'm about to lose on time. I just thought this this is interesting, but I think the position is kind of open for that. I don't know. H6, what I expected. I mean, eventually I have to do something. All right, we'll do it. Maybe I waited too long to pull the trigger on this. Wow, not what I expected. Okay, that that's cool. That changes the situation a bit. Don't have a lot of time here. I mean, it does look like black's better. But at least I shut down the pressure that his bishops were, were doing, and this kingside attacking stuff seems to have stopped. So maybe it's not that bad for me. I 
I still don't like white's position, but at least I'm castled. I can play like bishop e3. It doesn't seem that bad. But I'm down to 36 seconds. I have to just play blitz now. Black also has the queen side majority. But as we saw in the first game, he has good technique, so... You know, I can't expect to, like, just outplay him in an endgame or something because he's not a weak player. He's a good player. Um, you know, against lower-rated players, oftentimes I can rely on, rely on like, technical, technical play to bail me out, you know. But when you've got a good endgame player, it's, um, it's not really an option. He's got a two-minute time advantage here, and I'm just making random moves. This is sort of flailing around, threatening knight takes b5. My position seems like kind of sound. Uh, let's see. Trading pieces. Now knight c5. Oh. That's a problem. That is a problem. I don't know. Maybe I just lost in one move. I'm definitely losing a pawn. Or am I? What is going on here? Yeah, he has rook takes d3. I confuse him in my time pressure. I missed knight c5 though. I got too much behind on the clock. Protagon, welcome. And all you guys who are subscribers, I appreciate you hanging out with us. I'm going to try to play one more game. Looks like Chess Armageddon is challenging me. Um, I'm going to probably lose this match. The trick's only 2-1. to one. This position doesn't look good. Okay, knight takes d3, knight d5 is possibly good for me. But rook takes d3... I don't see what he's worried about. Okay, there's some... Some potential. I might have some tricks. He's using a massive amount of time. What is going on? Wow, he didn't take the pawn. Ghosts. He's like me, he's afraid of ghosts. I Maybe I missed something, I don't know, but he thought forever and then didn't take it. Still he might be better here, but it's kind of an awkward moment. Now my center is becoming strong. Strong or weak? <laughs> I'm not sure which one. It looks pretty strong now. Here he comes with the technique again. If you let him trade queens, it's all over. I learned that in the first game. kind of subtle move by me. Bishop b5. Doesn't really do anything. He's just going with the queenside pawns. It's hard to argue with that plan. 
I'm just ignoring him. I'm just checking Queen E5. Oh, this doesn't work. I just bluffed him. Maybe it works. Okay, this was just silly luck. He just didn't take on d3 with a winning position. I feel I feel kind of guilty. Like it was just totally totally winning for him, no? Um What is the deal here? Yeah. Well, okay. There's something wrong with it. At first, the computer was like, yeah, I'm going to take. Then it finds some move. I have some move here, rook c1. But, okay, he's just better after that. He's not winning, but he's just better after rook takes d3. There's no, there's no refutation. I can go here and just be slightly worse. I'm lucky that I'm only slightly worse, actually. So he just freaked out and used all his time and played... This move that lets me have active chances again. Tricks only, thanks for the break, man. You gave me a break there. Um, anyway, thanks for the games. I'm going to play one viewer, and uh, and I'm sure you're going to be streaming. So we'll uh, we'll continue this match later. Um, Chess Armageddon, I know you guys were all chomping at the bit to play. But again, thanks for the games, Tricks only. Thanks for not taking on D3 and being better. Um, yeah, my own time pressure sometimes makes makes people nervous. So, I think that was the case there. He was like, oh my god, he only has 8 seconds. This will be easy. Anyway, they weren't that bad games. The last game I played really, really crappy in the opening, though. Who do you think will win between uh, Aronian and, um, and Ding Liren? I don't know, man. You might as well flip a coin on that. But Arunian, you know, is the favorite, I think. He's got to be. He's a deeper player than pretty much anybody in the world, in my opinion. Maybe the deepest player in the game. I mean, his preparation is great. He's got a very sophisticated positional understanding. Um, I, I don't know. I respect Ingle Rem, but I just don't think he's a chess genius on the level of Arunian. And I don't think pretty much anybody is, really. I mean, I think that Levon is, is definitely the, the best player to challenge Carlsen for the World Championship. And I said this, like, last year, too. Um, an easy win for Magnus. Dude, Magnus couldn't even beat Karyakin, practically. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't think so. If Magnus like barely beat Karyakin in a match, you know, I don't think his chances against Aronian are better, to be perfectly honest. Magnus really doesn't have very much experience playing strong players. He's played in matches. He's played Anand twice, when Anand didn't seem like he even cared. Um, and Karyakin, you know, that's his world championship experience two matches with a nod who didn't seem interested in playing chess and uh and then karyakin who fought like a dog yeah but karyakin just keeps i mean aronian just keeps choking every time there's a challengers tournament i guess it's nerves you know but he's definitely in the best form he's been you know maybe ever now so He's, he's really come around after several years of of sort of um, seeming like he wasn't that serious about being number number one in the world. It seems like Aronian is uh, is really, you know, I don't know if it's a conscious thing or he just is just happening to play really well, but it looks like he's trying to become world champion. The way his results have been so consistent. Um, I don't think Anand, you know, really... 
I don't know, man. I just... He just didn't seem like he was really that into it. He was into collecting a million dollars. That's my opinion about about Anand. Um, I think he was there for the money, you know, which is hard to, you know, it's easy to understand. I mean, it's easy to understand, but, but I really, um, I mean, let's just put it this way. I think he just didn't believe he even had a chance, you know, maybe he didn't consciously not try, but he had so little self-confidence and he had just basically, it, it just appeared like a non knew or felt that he had no chance, you know? So if you don't believe you can win, I don't think you can win. And, and I think you need to have somebody challenge Carlson who's not intimidated by him. I mean, if you look at Carlson's games from the world, like the, the World Cup, I mean, he had several matches where it just looked like people, actually not just the World Cup. Um, there was a game now in, in Isle of Man where somebody played with Carlson and it looked like they just, they just kind of folded. Um, Oh, Zhang, right? Zhang has a perfectly okay position, but he just like played a little bit passive or something. Um, the psychological intimidation that Carlson seems to generate is is really significant, and I think it's um, it's the main reason, one of the main reasons why he wins all the time. But if you're not afraid of him, um, you have much better chances. And I don't think like Aronian is afraid of him, um, but I think Anand was. I think Anand was intimidated by Carlson. I think Anand didn't believe he had a real chance, you know. And if you don't believe you can win a match against someone, then probably you shouldn't be even playing. Um, but it's a million dollars, you know. So Anand is not going to refuse his chances to qualify and make that million dollars. But I don't think he ever believed he had a real chance. I've never really heard him speak on the subject, but I, I don't know. You know, I would, I would be very surprised if Anand in his heart of hearts believed he had a chance to beat Carlson. And I think um, there's a few people who who probably do believe they could. Karyakin believed he could. You know, Karyakin showed a lot of heart in his match with, he almost didn't even lose. He, he could have easily even won the match um, toward the end. So I think at least Karyakin showed heart, he showed self-confidence, whereas Anand just seemed to go through the motions. Um, here I don't know what to do, so I'm stalling. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Carlson's going to take the Isle of Man seriously. I mean, in the sense that, yes, he wants to try, but he's not going to, like, prepare for that tournament. I mean, he's playing, like, nine random players. That's, it's a baby tournament for the world champion. I mean, they normally wouldn't be playing an open with a bunch of random people. Chess Armageddon trying to trade pieces here. Maybe I should should redeploy. Do the same thing as you. I don't know. Maybe I had better. Okay, he's going to play b5 at some point. Now I kind of regret this. We don't have too much of an advantage here. He said William. Uh, yes. <laughs> why are you... <laughs> why are you having a personal conversation during our game? Hello. Chess Armageddon, who I don't know your first name. We gotta figure out how much they paid. Well, they may have paid different, different people different amounts of money. Um, it's a good question. You're going to tournaments over nine days. Three tournaments over nine days. Wow. Uh, that's a lot. Free alien tour with the FIDE president. I mean, those guys are getting paid plenty of plenty of appearance fees for uh, for the Isle of Man. Maybe Carlson gets more, you know? I mean, there could be like a generic fee, like everybody who wants to play who's over 2700 gets $20,000, you know? Or it could be that everybody has a private contract, you know? Um, but I really, as I was saying in the beginning of my stream, I don't really think that Kramnik is going to play for less than $10,000 um, appearance money. And obviously Carlson, but Carlson also has a relationship with the sponsors there. So, you know, maybe it's kind of like implied or maybe he's, you know, he's just getting like more general support with chess.com or whatever. I don't know. Um, this looks pretty good for black actually. It's, as much as he doesn't have space, he's, uh, he's freed himself. 
I will tell you how I go if you want. Good, let me know. I'm interested interested in how you guys do in your in your adventures. Um I'm personally I'm personally playing my first game in uh, in a tournament in in three months on Sunday. It'll probably be, you know, nothing special, but um, the Budapest Team Championship is pretty weak. Kramnik's chance at candidates gone now? Um, I don't know, I guess so. How's his rating? It's probably not doing too good, but I don't think he has. Kramnik's been out of form for the last year or so, and uh, he was in great form prior to that. You know, the last match, I thought he would have had a chance against Carlsen, but now it looks like he's not himself anymore, so I don't know. I think that Aronian is, is the real deal, and, uh, you know, but I said that before, but he keeps not getting qualified for the World Championship, so he's got to get through it. Um, my personal feeling is that I, I don't really like I don't like, um, you know, the format of, of world championship, um, qualifications anyway, I think, um, you know, if you're going to have a world championship that's based on a match, then logic would dictate that the qualifications leading up to it would be matches, not knockout tournaments and random Swiss system tournaments, um, and random round robins, um, the old fee day system of having candidates matches made more sense to me. If you're interested in finding out who the best player is, if you're interested in just having a random player face the world champion, as as has happened um, the last three times, you know, you might as well just like roll a die or roll two dice and like pick the top, you know, one of the top 12 players to, to play Magnus Carlsen, as is the system as it is now um, with the World Cups and, and, um, whatever you know you might as well just roll two dice and pick like oh okay it's a seven then we'll take anand again or oh okay it's an eight we'll play karyakin but if you want to have a match you know to determine who the challenger is or have matches to determine who the world championship challenger is i think you'd see a much higher a much higher um possibility that aronian would win we can see even in this fast time control um in in the world cup He's, he's dominating in this match style play because he is the best player. It's not a coincidence. Um, of course, you're fortunate to survive that long in, a, in any kind of fast time control. There's a bigger chance of a blunder or an accident or something. Anyways, so that's it for that speech. But what to do now? I've got nothing going on on the, on the D file. So let's switch it up to, to the B file. Piggy Sav. Once I played with Pigisov, he had a knight on b4. This is a good square. Karpov used this a lot too. Um, the knight on b4, potentially. And in there, on c6, maybe. But I don't have too much here. It looks like a small advantage. We got him to weaken his king side with h5 a little bit. Feels like there should be something for white. I'm not really sure. I don't see any loose pieces that I can pick off or anything. He's threatening, I guess he's threatening e6, potentially. Let's play this. We've got more time. No more challenges today, guys. We had a three game match with, uh, with tricks only, which um, did take up some time, but I think it was worth it. We had some good games and uh, it was fun. So we'll occasionally, you know, actually I'd like to play Spinal Tap Chess too, but he's, you know, it's so early in the morning. He's like 5 a.m. there. Um, so it's tough for him. Now check and take. Got Queen B2 check. We might have Rook C5. Well, we have Knight takes F6 and Rook takes C5. He's got an intermezzo. Intermezzo with bishop takes g2, though. You made a mistake? Are you sure? Uh, knight takes f6. 
I'm not certain that it's winning for me. Now it's winning. I think you could play f6, though. That's the question. I mean, does f6 work? Because rook takes c5. Um, am I crazy? Right. I mean, f6. Why can't you play that? I wasn't sure. I think f6 might have been playable. Nothing else, though. It still loses? I didn't see. Knight takes f6, rook takes f6, rook takes c5, bishop takes g2, followed by king takes g2, queen b7 check, and pawn takes c5, no? I didn't see a clear win after, after f6. I mean, it feels like white is better, but I don't know. Remedy, remedy. I'm doing good. Um, Sia is hello in Hungarian. Now we're just up a piece. So the question was f6. Could he have played f6? We're just finishing the stream, Remedy, and uh, sorry for that. We're going to end it up here now with this last game, but that's it for today. Any checkmates? Nope. I don't see any checkmates. Let's just bring this back and, and maybe play e4, e5 if I can. He'll play f6, though. So this is actually not really the greatest way to make progress here. Bishop h3, subtle threat. Probably I should have played rook d3 and rook e3 instead. It's never too late to change your mind. The wrong rook. Nah. Is this a trap? No, because I have bishop takes. All right. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, he's still alive. He's staying alive here. Unfortunately, I have induced further weakness in black's king side. And this looks... Looks pretty tough for black to survive this. Now his king side is getting opened up. Um, if I take on d6, I have rook d7, but he gets some counterplay. I might as well just bring this bishop back to g2 now. It's not doing anything on h3. We're clearly winning. I take this pawn anytime. I just like to reduce risk. Yeah, that's it. Um, so I want to know if I, if you could have played f6 before. I didn't think it was lost. Yeah, you could even play e5. I mean, e5 is awful from the positional perspective, but f6 um, isn't isn't a win for me. I'm just slightly better strategically. You know, nothing has really changed here. I don't have any tactics after f6. So, yeah, the losing move is actually king h7. You're just a little bit worse here. Anyway, guys, we will be back... Um, Tomorrow night with a subscriber stream, Thursday. Chiefs of Bowl. Uh, I don't know if you. I did unban you, dude. I thought I did. I thought I did. I thought I did, man. Where? Oh my god. Why can't I click on your name and. Um. All right, I will, I will take care of that Chiefsable. Anyway, guys, um, I banned Chiefsable by accident, clicking on the wrong name, but I thought I had unbanned him, but I just now got a message telling me that I didn't, so whoops. Anyway, guys, uh, sorry if I accidentally ban you on the stream. Don't take it personally. We'll be back Thursday night with more, um, more chess. Subscriber stream on Thursday. 
and um, I will see you guys then. So thanks a lot. Bring your games for analysis of your subscribers and even viewers. Uh, we might get to a few viewer games. Also, Blitz and Classical Chess tomorrow night at 7. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tricks Only, for, uh, for fun games today. And I'll see you guys tomorrow night. And good luck with your stream, Tricks Only. Later, guys. Bye-bye.